Well, hello, everybody. We're going to cover a nice little concept today in reference to how we increase productivity for a cell performer for our crews, for anybody who's uh, on the foreman and worker level. So we're going to get right to it. I really appreciate you staying with us tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to uh, go through some really nice visuals that I prepared on Miro here. So uh, this is on the superintendent growth path board. We'll have access out to this probably in about a month so that people can access it. But let me take you first and foremost to this little image right here, which I really, really like. I've been working with some clients recently and we've been talking about labor productivity and let me anchor this for you and then I'll go through the steps. So first and foremost, I love workers and foreman. So when I call workers and foreman either green a yellow and red, what I mean is that we either have a green, yellow, or red ability to leverage their, capab they ca their capability and potential and uh, their, the wisdom that they have as, as, a, as an individual within the organization or as a crew. I'm not saying that a person is a green person or a yellow person or a red person. What I'm saying is that the way that we organize and leverage people's capabilities can either be green, yellow, or red. And so these groups, this single little sticky here on Miro will represent the foreman, and these will represent the workers. My point before I go through this in too much detail is that we need to have green crews, whether it's a concrete crew or framing crew or whatever, uh, you know, civil infrastructure crew, doesn't matter what kind of crew, we need green crews. And if we start to take a green crew person over here and mix over here, and then say, all right, I'm gonna take a couple of my uh, green people over here, and I'm gonna merge them over with my red crews to see if I can make them better, then that actually doesn't do uh, anything other than it turns everyone to where they're either a yellow or a red crew. So my point is, if you'd start doing that with everybody and all of your crews mixing and matching and switching them and changing with inconsistent leaders and inconsistent people, you're actually not helping. You're actually turning everyone to where we're in worse shape than we were before. And so that that is actually just uh, an absolute tragedy if we do that. Uh, by that mix and matching technique. It's not going to work and we have to stop. So I'm going to hit undo and uh, make the point, the argument that once we have a green crew, we should keep a green crew. And once we have a yellow crew, we should train them to where they're a green crew. When we have a red crew, we should train them to be a yellow crew or invite them to be happier and work somewhere else or change the composition. And so the focus of a company, and I'll come back to this, would be to make sure that the crews that are making the company money are so happy, so relevant, so able to measure their success and win daily, and so known by leadership that they will never leave. We should have more and more green crews, meaning that they're trained. The yellow crews should be trained to become green crews and red crews should be trained to become yellow crews. And red crews either have to be readjusted with their composition to be yellow crews, or again, we have to switch them up, mix them up, get them doing the right things with the right group, or we need to invite them to leave. Not because we don't like them, not because we're punishing them, but because they're obviously not going to thrive here and we want human beings to thrive. So let me take you through the process here. And I would hope that everybody in construction would please give this a shot. Step number one, we have to enforce, enforce production principles. Uh, keep consistent leaders. That, and, and we can go into, into, into more depth in this in the future on why this is true, but I need you in the meantime, please just to believe me. Keep consistent leaders. Once you have a good foreman with a good crew, meaning that they're doing good things and that they're happy, good means that they're happy, they're leveraged, we are blessing their lives and they're able to make production, right? Uh, once you have that, keep that leader. We need to organize effective crews based on skills, experience, and crew culture. Every crew has its own subculture. And so just mixing workers around 
doesn't mean that they're naturally going to be a cultural fit with each other. We have to get the right crew composition. Once we have that crew composition, we need to keep it. And once we have that consistent crew composition, make sure that they stay that way, protect them, leave them alone and make them feel so valued, known or relevant that they do not quit and leave your company. The other thing is we have to have right size crew, crews, not too small, have the right amount of people with maybe one or two more as a buffer, but not too many, definitely not too few and not too many that will only slow down production. Uh, keep crews focused on what they do best. Don't have a crew go do columns half a day and then walls at the other half and then decks and then switch them over to something else and then clean up in this. Keep them focused day in and day out, doing the best things, the same things, the things they're best at day in and day out, just like you would a football team or just like you would any professional team. Onboard people quickly and reduce the need for onboarding by keeping those crews consistent. And then re reduce the complexity of communication by having huddles, making sure you have right team sizes and that you use visual systems and reduce overtime. That's step number one. Number two, like we said, we need to identify how many companies in our industry actually know what uh, crews are green, yellow, and red by judging how well we're leveraging their potential as human beings and how well they enjoy their work. So we need to identify that and protect the green crews. Identify the yellow crews and train the yellow crews. We need to identify the non-performing, meaning we haven't leveraged their ability, the non-performing red crews, and remove them or train them to be yellow crews. Step number three, we have to have visual systems. What I would love to have in every company that has self-perform is the human resources group or department or team development department, whatever, with the general superintendents, with the craft leaders and leadership, have a meeting once a week and visualize this board. Uh, sorry about that. Visualize this board and uh, know by name where everybody is and protect for uh, our main priority, our green crews that we want to keep. So show all the crews, keep it visual and confidential and protected, score all aspects of the team and how effective they are. Now, when you go here in the detail, you can have a scoring number by crew based on what's important. I recommend crew days without an injury, production average day, days together as a team, uh, what, rework because we can't have crews installing rework or installing things that need to be reworked. Um, and then when you have a high scoring crew, you have to take care of them. Right. And so also you can grade the foreman, you can grade the workers. That's not a mean thing. That means that we believe in human beings and they can rise to the occasion. Right. And so the green is going to make money. Uh, the yellow is going to make a little bit of money or break even. The red crews are going to lose this money. You can't have bad quality or rework here, or you are spending all of the money that you're making up here. And for the love of all things holy, you cannot start to mix and match these green crews. Once you have a green crew, you protect it with everything you got. Then a company in step four should spend most of their time here. Increasing the number of retained green crews, increasing the number of green crews through training, increasing the number of yellow crews by purposing and organizing the red crews, and by making sure we do not have crews or foremen or leaders who are installing things that are wasting all of the money of the company and the work that these hardworking women and men are doing up here. Okay, then uh, this maybe is a little bit more complex in a future video from our scheduling systems, we have to make sure that those green crews have the right production work. And from the foreman huddle, they have maps and, and uh, you can say micro tax plans, daily tax plans that will allow them to know what the production targets are for that day so that the lead persons and sub foreman can orient their crews and know what winning looks like. And so that is the absolute key to it. And then superintendents, need to create flow with tax control, identify uh, production backlog work in case there are any starts or stops, improve handoffs, and solve any major issues for self-perform. Any company will tell you, if you have self-perform work, you have to have self-perform work highly functioning in order, in order for your company to make the profit that can. And we believe in the trades, the workers and the foremen that are there. I hope this video has been helpful. Again, we need to follow production principles, identify our crews, 
We need to be able to visualize it in meetings. I don't know what else leadership or human resources or general superintendents could be doing that is more important than having this meeting on a weekly basis. And we need to keep our focus there and align and make sure that we know the production targets, what winning looks like daily for the crews that are out there performing on a daily basis. On we go.